would cling to that thing. And that basically meant we don't want you to uh, talk to us anymore. And so people would come back from outreach. Christians would come back in outreach. And I'd say, how'd it go? Did anybody get saved? And they'd say something like, oh, the neighborhood was all Buddhist. Uh, that's why I sent you there. Amen. That sounds like a good place to preach Jesus to me. Amen. Like, where did you want me to send you to? A neighborhood of all born-again Christians? What? <laughs> Hello? Hello? We're witnessing Jesus to people that don't know Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> God is seeking a people from every hidden group. There are no invisible people. Right now, all over the world, missionaries are going to places that you can't even pronounce the name of. And they're pulling people from different cultures and different races and presenting Christ to them. And they are getting saved. It seems like America, you think, man, nobody wants to get saved. Nobody wants to believe God anymore. I'm here to tell you, it's a lie from hell to believe that people in the third world or in these uh, other countries don't want Christ. They are running to the gospel in these nations. There's great revival in China, all over China today, in India today, and African nations today. There's great revival all over the world, and that's why the devil's mad, and that's why uh, we're seeing all these terrorist things and these terrible things. The devil knows his time is short, yeah. and he's trying to keep us divided, even as he unites us in some kind of uh, bogus, shallow uh, uh, unity that's based on uh, government or money or, or uh, sexual immorality. He's trying to unify us under sin. Jesus is trying to make every person uh, unified in the family of God under Christ. Amen. Amen. He's sending his angels every day. You know, you know, it's his angels are going out. Think, I want you to remember this thought. Every hair on your head is counted. He does care about every person in this room. He knows every need of every person in this room. He is concerned about every person. There's no person here because of any reason at all that God would ignore you. Every hair on your head is counted, it says in the word of God. Every hair, is, uh, God takes notice of every hair on your head, including the ones that uh, you older folks left on your pillow last night. Gosh, I'm starting to thin out up here. He takes notice of everything. Because he loves you so much. Because why? There are no invisible people with God. Right. Every sin, every fear, every need that you have, God takes notice of. There are invisible words, these shallow labels that people put on each other. And there are, uh, but there are no invisible people because every soul and life is precious to God. When God looks out over the world, he only sees two, two groups of people. There's only one division and two groups of people. There are the redeemed and there are those who are yet to be redeemed. When God looks out over the nations, in the, in the physical realm, there's only one nation God ever sees. That's Israel. How many people know that's biblical? Amen. Right? That's prophet Amos speaking right there. But... In our uh, church era, there's only two kingdoms that he sees. There's the kingdom of God, and then there's the kingdom of those who are still lying in the kingdom of darkness. And God wants everyone to be in his kingdom. He doesn't make a distinction. Uh, our sin choice, our rejection of Christ uh, separates us from the kingdom of God, separates us from the redeemed. And that's why our job is to preach Christ to every living creature. Amen. Every living creature doesn't mean that your dog doesn't mean the squirrels and the opossums. It means every race, every tongue, every ethnicity, every uh, creature we're to witness to. Because God does not make any divisions based on those shallow, invisible words that we use to describe people. Amen. <clears throat> God loves both sides equally. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 8 to 11. But God demonstrates, in other words, he proves his love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more having now been justified by his blood. His blood. That's the only thing that justifies you. His blood. <clears throat> uh, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies. Enemies. Right? Who's your enemy? We were enemies of God when we were unredeemed, when we were dwelling in the kingdom of darkness. Maybe you're still there. 
You might not think you're an enemy of God, but you are. But the good news is you can be reconciled. Isn't that a good word for what America needs right now? Some reconciliation. Right? How are we going to be reconciled? By the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to bring people together. We can have protest rallies and we can all hold hands and sing songs, but there's always going to be some hater. There's always going to be someone that's going to uh, come out and, uh, and, uh, and kill people and hurt people because they're full of bitterness and uh, bile and shallow, invisible words that they label people on. We're above and beyond that. We're called to be like Christ and reconcile people through the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. We'll be, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. What a beautiful word for what we need. That's a good term for God's people. Let's go to our main text in Galatians again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For you are all sons of God. Notice the period isn't right there. Because we're not sons of God unless we have who? Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? We're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. All of us have been made children of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. We have been born into the family of God. Born again into the family of God because of what Jesus did our, in our faith in uh, him. For as many as you were baptized into Christ to put on Christ. In other words, when you got saved, you were baptized, uh, uh, were baptized. Literally, you put on Christ. You became a new creation. And uh, whatever race, skin color, or ethnicity, uh, you uh, appear to be into your carnal eyes. You, are new. you no longer possess that in the eyes of God. That's all gone. That's all washed away. Amen. Christ sees Christ on you now. You put on Christ. And when you look at your brother or sister in the church, regardless of how they look to your physical shallow eyes, you are looking at a child of God. Hello. <clears throat> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. What's he saying? He's saying simply that our labels that we use on people, this doesn't wipe away the reality. How many people know men and women are different? Hello. All right. How many people know that even though uh, those labels don't apply, we still need to be sensitive about people? Right. There are some cultures where, you, you know, you don't shake uh, hands with the left hand. You don't do certain things. We're not to be a stumbling block before people. Paul would not eat meat among people who are sensitive to this. So, uh, you know, if you're a vegan and you're, you don't want to kill any man animals because the Bible says, uh, you know, thou shalt not murder. I'll just remind you. Book of Acts says kill and eat, and I'll just I'll remind you of that. But uh, but if you want me to eat a, a soy burger instead of a, a piece of beef, I'll eat that with you, just because I don't want to be a stumbling block. So we don't want to be a stumbling block. But when it comes to labeling people and seeing their identity, your identity is in Christ. Your identity is in Christ. Once you have received Jesus by faith, your identity is in Christ. You put on Christ. All that other, all those other labels don't apply. There is neither a Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. All one in Christ Jesus. For if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. You know what that means? You're all Jews now. Hello. That's for all you secret anti-Semites out there. You put on Christ, you're Abraham's seed now. You're descended from Abraham. Now I know, we, I'm not going to tell that to an Orthodox Jew, they'll get mad. Right? Cultural sensitivities. They, they don't have Christ. But spiritually, this is what it means when we put on Christ. We become heirs of the promises given to Abraham, from whom all the Jewish people descended. We are now part of that family. Because why? All the uh, other labels are wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And heirs according to the promise. <clears throat> Praise the Lord for that. Let's, let's take a, a quick uh, look. And how God views people. I want you to know God views people very differently. Remember I said redeemed and unredeemed. There's only two categories of people. Kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light, right? Only two categories of people. Here's, what, here's how you look to God. Here's, there's only two ways you can look to God. Okay. That's it right there. See that? That's how you look to God right now. I know you think you might look Irish. 
African American, Mexican, whatever, whatever you're calling yourself these days when you're not at church. Because over here, those are invisible words, right? <laughs> this is all God sees, right? You know what this is, right? This is, this is, this is your, your skin color to God. Homer's all-purpose bucket. <laughs> you're orange to God if you're not saved. And you know you're full of filth. You're a bucket of filth. I don't know, maybe you're a lust bucket. Right. That's what you are, man. If you're not saved today, if you're not right with God. So you can try to decorate that bucket any way you want. It's still a bucket of filth. Look at this, man. When you give your life to Christ, look what happens. You get washed in the blood. Right? You go on the potter's wheel and you get shaped into something Amen. that's beautiful and useful. Amen. Amen. You know what you can do with this? The light of Christ, right, shines right through it. That's why you're translucent to God because that gospel light is supposed to shine. Something's wrong if they can't see the light. You might have gone back to being a bucket. Uh -oh. Right? Or maybe you're you're afraid to let the light shine in front of certain people, so you act like a bucket. <laughs> right? You know what else you can do with this? You can fill it. Living water. Holy Spirit. You can do a lot more with this now. The light still shines through the living water. Can I get an amen? amen. This is how you're supposed to look to God. You know what else you can do with that living water? You can put things in there that will stay alive. You can put flowers in there. Little hints of little husbands. <laughs> you can put flowers in there. Leave it on the kitchen table. And oh, you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot more life in your marriage. <laughs> the things that can bear fruit, right? Because we're supposed to bear fruit. Yeah. If we're children of God. Holy Spirit bears fruit. And you can pour this out. You can go to your friend who's a bucket, right? And you can let some of those rivers of living water pour into their life. And they might get convicted and they might come to church and become one of these. Yeah. That's what God has called us to be. Yeah. This, these are, here's your races. Here's your ethnicities. Here's your divisions. Here's your two labels. All the other labels are invisible to God. Redeemed or unredeemed? You get to choose. Because he already chose. You know, he already made the decision. You ever meet people that say, it's up to God. Uh, I think he already decided when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. Yes. Now you have to decide where you're going to spend your life and your eternity. How you're going to spend it. What you're going to be in eternity. Yes. Amen. God's already chosen. Now you've got to choose. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our heads. Every